This is one of those problems that really does not take very long if you know how to use a calculator. Most people know how to divide one by four and figure out what one fourth is as a decimal and then compare it to these other things that they push into a calculator. But this can be even quicker if you know how to estimate fractions. Maybe not actually calculate the decimals, but just estimate which one's big and which one's small. And this concept of big and small I've got right here, what does it take to make a big number? Well, something big on top would do it, right? A hundred divided by something is probably going to be pretty big because a hundred is big. Now, the way to make, the other way to make fractions big is to have a small number on the bottom. So for example, a hundred divided by two is going to be pretty big. That's going to be much bigger than a hundred divided by 10, right? You see, as the number on the bottom got bigger, the overall result got smaller. This thing turns into 10. This thing over here turns into 50. Okay, 50 is a lot bigger than 10. So we're going to take that idea of something big divided by something small to just estimate which fractions are bigger and which fractions are smaller. And if I want to, here, let's say big, as in, um, here, greater than one, and we'll say small is something less than one. Which one of these things are small? Well, one-fourth is small because one is less than four. One-half is small. Six-sevenths is small. And the rest of these things look like they're big. So that's a quick way of estimating the order that these should go in. Another thing that would be a useful skill is if you can just remember some basics about division. Like one-half. Do we know what one-half is? It's 0 0.5. That you should have memorized. Oop, except I don't want to put decimals in here. That would be wrong. So one half is 0 0.5, one quarter is 0 0.25. I know those are the smallest numbers in here. Six sevenths, hey, that's almost one, because six divided by seven, it, it's barely less than one. I don't know what the decimal is. That's not one of those, I don't keep my sevenths memorized in decimal form, but I do know that that's almost one, it's just a little smaller. And now as you look at these other ones, nine fifths, seven sixths, five thirds, which one of those are biggest? Well, again, some things come in handy to remember, like 7 sixths, that's barely more than one. I know that's just over the line. 5 thirds and 9 fifths, which one's bigger? Uh, not really too sure. It does help to know something about decimals here. So 5 thirds is 1.666, whereas 9 fifths, if I remember this right, is 1.8. Okay, so those, those two you may have to pull out a calculator for. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I have that right. Double check me. But I think this goes 5 thirds and then 9 fifths. So if you want to do this quickly without a calculator, it does help to know some basic rules about division. Big numbers on top, small numbers on bottom, those are how you get big results. And then just to have a few basics memorized, like what is a fifth? One fifth is equal to 0 0.2. What is a third? One third is equal to 0 0.3333 and so on forever. If you can just memorize a couple basics like this, you'll see those from time to time. It's a handy skill.